allô Le coq de l'école, le coq de l'école, allô, allô Le coq de l'école, le coq de l'école, allô, allô What's up, Milwaukee? This is your boy, Track Lacer. What's up to the rest of the nation? Hey, I'm going to make this video pretty quick to the point. You know I can usually ramble on for 10 minutes easily, um, especially about something like this. But in this situation, I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter because I think I'm a little bit late to the party. Part of the reason that I'm late to the party is because... I expected at least two more responses by now. But obviously, we're talking about the beef, the so-called rap battle between Meek Mill and Drake. And Meek Mill put out a very disappointing, non-energetic, non-lyrical, and non-specific diss song called Wanna Know. Uh, it actually kind of had a chorus in it too, so he actually kind of made a song, so I'm going to get back to that in a minute, and that was against two songs, one that was light work, called Charged Up, where Drake took some shots, and then he came with some heavy stuff on the song called Back to Back, so I'm going to break this down from three perspectives. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep it, I'm going to try to keep it under 10 minutes. So, from the first perspective, is we're going to come from Nicki Minaj's side. Because, if you notice, Nicki hasn't said anything. But as one of my number one partners once told me, whenever there's beef between black men, you're going to find some money in there, or you're going to find some little chick in there. Um, Nicki has a music video with Meek Mill for a single off of his new album, and it's called All Eyes on You, and I'm just kind of peeping, in this video, she licking on Meek Mill's ear, she's, uh, roller skating in the house with him. She never did any of this type of stuff with Safari. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it came, it seemed kind of forced that you was in a relationship for 12 years with a cat and claimed to uh, had a miscarriage with a kid with him, claimed that y'all was engaged at one point. You went through all this and you never... You know, uh, you never did this type of public displays of affection, you know. Um, but in public with Meek Mill, she be curving, dude. Like, you know, 34, 36, 37 curves. Like, there's this one time they at, at like a restaurant or something, and Meek is smiling, and he lean in to get the kiss. And she kind of looked back and don't respond. And then she kind of smiled and kissed at like the last second. Like she kind of recoiled. Like, like she was smiling, but she seemed repulsed. You feel what I'm saying? And then there's obviously the infamous meme when um, they at the All-Star game. And Mick said something to her. You know, and, you know, he kind of, he kind of smiling like a kid, you know, whatever he said to her. And, um, as he's smiling at her, and he said what he said, you know, Nikki eyes just get big, like, 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 her eyes get big, like, whatever he said to her was just corny. So the body language is saying, I'm not really feeling him. So in public, 
it don't really seem like she really feeling dude like that. But uh, then again, in New York City, in Manhattan, she did go to LaGuardia School of Performing Arts. So before she was a singer, before she was a rapper, she's an actor. So I'm thinking that she's just acting for the camera, man. She's She seems to be, be pretty good at that in terms of just putting on a show and making it seem like she feeling dude. Okay, so that's Nikki's part. Um, but I, let me say this before I get off of Nikki. I do kind of think that it hurts her, her stock or her brand as a whole if me keep taking these losses and that's supposed to be your man. I just don't think it's good for her. You know what I'm saying? Like, he still can't be opening up these tours for her and they booing him before she come on stage. So, we'll have to wait to see what happens with that. So now let's get to Drake. Now, obviously, I'm a light-skinned cat, so don't get it twisted, because Drake clearly smashed dude in this battle, but I'm not cheering for the light-skinned dude. Y'all know I don't ride like that. Um, Y'all know this is what I do, so I want to take it from the perspective of Meek just can't battle. That's just not what he do, and the reason I say that is because Drake is absolutely crushing him, giving him the business. But a non-light-skinned dude brought it to him a couple years ago. Cassidy. Cassidy murdered dude in a battle. They did songs back and forth. Then after that, when old dark-skinned Kendrick Lamar came at his head on control, the response that Meek Mill gave was weak. It was lackluster. So, it's like he saw the light-skinned dude that he thought is soft and just like, oh, I'm finna go in on him. And he didn't bring it. So, this is the third time I've seen Meek Mill in action and he's supposed to be a battle rapper from Philly and I'm not seeing no action. Not about that action, boss. That's what Marshawn Lynch would tell you. But, in terms of Drake... Drake talks a lot about things that Nicki Minaj told him, okay, uh, when he makes the comment from Charged Up, never had a girl, first of all, I never been starstruck, second of all, I never had a girl tell me to get my bars up, for him to say that, this is something Nicki had to say to him in passing, you know what I'm saying, because you know, they've been around each other for five years before him and uh, Nikki got into this relationship before me got into this relationship they've been label mates for five years so I mean some people kind of think that it might be considered petty or weak that Drake is repeating what a female told him but possibly the little pillow talking is how Meek Mill heard that Ghost have a Drake uh, I mean Ghost have a Drake writer I said, ghosts have a Drake rider. The Drake has a ghost rider. She might have heard that from Nikki. So, it could go both ways. Uh, what else did Drake say? Drake said, uh, oh yeah, you supposed to give the world tour? Is this the world tour or your girl's tour? This ain't what she meant when she told you to open up more? Come on, man. Come on, man. That's... And you know, and before I played myself, he might have actually took that from something that Meek Mill might have said in the interview, because I think Meek mentioned something about him slowing down his raps and stop yelling so much, and Nicki told him to open up more. I got to research that, but that might not have came directly from Nicki to Drake's ears, but either way, that's absolutely horrible The dude said that to you. You know what I'm saying? So, Drake is saying a lot of personal stuff, but, I mean, it's lyrical. I mean, he said, you getting bodied by a singer, nigga. You know? And then trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. Now, some people might say, well, 
Drake isn't gangster, but so that lyric shouldn't count. But it does count because Meek Mill is the one that projects himself as gangster and he just seemed real emotional on social media. You know, just real quick with the tweets and the Instagrams and 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 always doing LOL. Fam, stop doing LOL, man. That's that's very seventh grade middle school girl. You know, that's that's high tops with the uh with the jean skirts on, man. You know, that's you don't have to say that every time you post something. LOL. Okay, so I hit the ten minute mark, so I do gotta wrap this up. Meek Mill, you talking about that somebody peed on Drake at the premiere of Takers with T.I. and Idris Elba and Chris Brown. Dog, you didn't pee on him. Okay, so you point out on this song that somebody else peed on him and he didn't do nothing about it. A, you wasn't there. And B, you didn't pee on him. So you can't take credit for another man's work, man. That's you supposed to be a street dude. You're supposed to know that. Second of all, you said, uh, Diddy smacked you. He almost caught a domestic. That's something else you said on your song. You didn't smack him? Once again, you, you taking credit for what Diddy did? You didn't do it? And yeah, okay, Drake didn't do anything back. So that should give you all the more reason where you should have been the one doing something to him. Stop stop worrying about what other people did to the man. If you're gonna especially if you're gonna use it in a rap. It, it wasn't one of your homeboys from Philly that did it, then that'd be something different. If Gilly the Kid did some of this stuff, maybe we talking now. If Benny Siegel did it, maybe we talking. But nobody from the 215 did any of this stuff you're talking about. Um when you said riding through the uh six and you did you used the reference track when you dissed Drake. Dude, when you played the reference track during your song, the part that you use is when Quentin Miller was singing, Ride Through the Six With My Woes. So it's two things wrong with that. A, it wasn't lyrics. Dog, it, it's, it's plenty of rappers who make money writing hooks for people that were unsuccessful with their rap careers. Bone Crusher is one. Bone Crusher been making money writing hooks for a long time. Um, David Banner, kind of a, a so-so rap career commercially, but he made a lot of money producing and what? Writing hooks for people. So you got a reference track of a dude singing a hook? That's not even lyrics. And then second, what makes it even worse is that the energy that Quentin Miller has on these songs it's kind of evident that he don't really have star power. So it'd be different if when we heard the reference track, we was like, oh, this dude Cole, he got some energy. But he sound like a B-list dude who gives an idea and then Drake come in with A-list performance, A-list delivery and bring the idea to life and make it sound better. So that's not really... That's not really valid in my point. And then the final thing, man, I'll say is that you put the ghost face sample, the, the ghost face killer sample. We got to get him off of here. As far as I know, if, hey, 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 and, and he think he tough. Hey, boy. Dude, the miseducation of Sonny Carson. That's what the movie comes from. Man, Ghostface used that in 1996, man. We almost 20 years later, and you using a sample on your song. Dog, that's filler. To me, you had filler with the reference track, and then you had filler with this Sonny Carson sample. So, to just take away from the fact that you couldn't really think of no bars. And, and then there was no rebuttal. All the stuff dude said to you, you didn't directly address none of the stuff that he said, man. So, and finally, fam, when you got Whataburger tweeting at you, shout out to all my people down in Wichita Falls, Texas. Used to live there for three years when my mama was in the military. And Whataburger is more of a southern uh, 
hamburger chain. Bam. Waterburger tweeted you and said, if you need your beef seasoned the right way, Meek Mill, come see us. We'll show you how to treat beef. Dog, you got southern fast food restaurants clowning your response to another rapper. In the words, in the immortal words of Sibo from Sacramento, when he was talking about, um, I think it was Ja Rule, or maybe he was into it with 50 Cent, one of them. Yeah, he was into it with 50 Cent, because he said he had a restraining order on another man. He said, oh my goodness. And that's all I can say, man. You got Waterburger treating you. You got Waterburger treating you, dog. On Twitter. Oh, my goodness. Hey, this has been your boy Track Lacer. Another edition of Track Lacer's Opinions. I'm out of here. I wouldn't have did this video if, uh, if the three-peat didn't come out. But at this point, I think that Drake has been advised to just lay off and don't do no three-peat. And thankfully, Meek Mill has been advised not to follow up. I want to know what anything else.